My vegan roommate berated and called me evil for consuming animal products, so I filled our apartment with carnivorous plants to spite her. Okay, so I 24F have been living with my roommate 26F for three years. My roommate is a strict vegan and has been since she was 14. I, however, am not. This has never been a problem since I think people can do whatever they want with their lives and I have never tried to change her mind about being vegan. My roommate is a bit of a plant lady. She's been collecting and raising different types of plants for years and has amassed quite a collection. She even puts little sticker labels with a name she's given them. Which is adorable she's truly one to die for her plants. I think this is cool but have never really interacted with them besides watering them whenever she's out. It really doesn't get in the way of my life so I don't care that she's so obsessed with them and I'm glad she has a hobby. Here's why the problem begins. Two months ago she visited a conference on animal products and came back with a more fiery spirit. She started going to events regularly, became a local activist, started preaching to people in the street etc. Now this isn't a problem. She's a human being who can believe whatever she wants. Or at least it wasn't a problem until every conversation with her transformed into telling me why I should go vegan, why I'm evil for consuming animal products and how I should be ashamed that I'm not vegan. This seemed weird since she hadn't acted like this prior to the conference. But it had gotten so common I started waking up earlier to go to work so I could eat my eggs in the parking lot of my job so I don't have to hear her rant. Since we were close to the end of our lease I had decided to pull a little stunt before we parted ways. I headed to an exotic plants place near us and got a bunch of different types of carnivorous plants. I'm talking every single single species I could get my hands on. I also got pots and things to hang them from so they looked pretty. My roommate wasn't there that day so I had plenty of time to set the place up. I decided to do it in the kitchen since that's where most of her scolding would take place. I put them everywhere I could. Wherever she had a plant, I put one right beside it just to be extra petty. It looked like a greenhouse in there. Honestly, I was pretty proud of my work. I felt like Buddy the Elf when he renovated the store. When she got home, she started screaming at me, blowing up saying that I'm horrible. She was livid, but because I bought them and I hadn't moved or touched anything of hers, she couldn't do anything. It's been like this for the last few weeks and I've been caring for them daily and even researching the best ways to keep them alive and purchasing products so they can thrive. Honestly, I've actually gotten pretty fond of the plants. I went as far as naming and labeling them. I'm moving out today so I thought I would tell this story because it's kinda crazy. Story 2. I got my dirty roommate fired. I 30 FM from country A and a few years ago I was hired by a company in country B. I had to move to country B for a few months in order to be trained for the job and then I could go back home to keep working remotely. I was hired more or less at the same time as a few other people from my country. As a result, the company had to find a suitable accommodation to put us in for several weeks and so hotels were not an option. They found apartments for rent and put two employees from country A in each apartment. I was the last employee from country A to be hired and as a result I was accommodated in the only apartment that still had a free spot with a roommate from my country who we will call Jeff 32 m Cue to my first day in Country B. I was picked up at the train station after a long plane ride and Jeff and others were kind enough to come get me to walk me to the apartment building we were all sharing. During the walk Jeff kept telling me how long he had spent cleaning the apartment to make it ready for me and I was thankful. However, when we got to the apartment, it was nasty, full of dirt and what I want to assume were Jeff's beard hairs scattered around the place. The toilet was disgusting, the kitchen was sticky up to the ceiling, so I spent my first few days cleaning everything behind Jeff's back so as to not offend him. Some people's standards of cleanliness are different so I thought nothing of it. Weeks passed and Jeff never cleaned again. He was incredibly messy, never cleaned after himself, walked in dirty mud boots all around the house, never did a single dish, never washed his bed sheets, barely showered, often forgot to flush the toilet after using it, never opened a single window to air the house, etc. I was absolutely disgusted and anxious the entire time I lived there, and I cleaned the house like a sick person each day to keep it livable for me. On our last night before returning to our home country, I packed my suitcases, washed all towels, linens, clothes, floors, surfaces, appliances, everything. 
Jeff chose to get pissing drunk instead and not pack his suitcase or clean his room because he said it would take him 10 minutes the next morning. The next morning, I got a knock on the door at approximately 9 a.m. It was our boss coming to pick up Jeff because his flight was early in the morning. He was going to a different part of our country. Jeff was asleep in his dirty room and I had to wake him up. He panicked, threw a few things in his suitcase and ran for the door. Before he left I asked if he intended on cleaning his bedroom as he promised and he begged me to do it because I'm a better cleaner and he was too much in a rush. I called him a pig and he left. Cue my revenge. I had spent several weeks cleaning after him, not complaining to not come across as annoying and just putting my head down and cleaning to make the house livable for me. I was so done and did not want to pick up any more hair or dirt coming from this man's body. So I called our boss. I explained the situation. The company had told us to leave the apartment spotless otherwise they wouldn't get their deposits back. My boss came to the house to check Jeff's room and was appalled at what he saw. He profusely apologized to me, went to a supermarket, and bought new cleaning supplies. Even brought a hoover from his own house. He spent the next few hours scrubbing the room on his hands and knees. He threw out the clothes and personal items Jeff had forgotten. And best of all, a few weeks after and seeing Jeff's performance was completely subpar, he fired Jeff. If he hadn't been such a terrible human, he might have helped him get better at the job, but he chose to fire him instead. Long story short, Jeff ruined his own chances at a very good job, and I was thanked over and over again for putting up with the situation so gracefully. I also got a raise shortly after. So long story short, don't be a pig. It can have bigger consequences than expected. Story 3. Co-worker fired for sitting. Way back in the late 90s, I worked for a large grocery chain that goes by several names depending on what part of the country you are in. We had a cashier who had surgery about three weeks earlier, and he had a hard time standing for a long time, so he did the obvious thing and brought in a stool to rest on while he worked. The manager said he couldn't have a stool and would need to get rid of it because the company policy said no sitting while clocked in evidently not even on breaks. The cashier tried and failed to finish his shift and ended up leaving early. He did this a couple times and was eventually fired for poor work performance. Q malicious compliance. Now I worked as a night crew stalker, which means I unload the truck, load up the go backs, and stock the aisles. I also took out all of the trash for the admin offices. While I was cleaning the offices, I removed every chair I could find and loaded them into the go backs truck. I also printed out a letter in bold wording to the effect of All employees are reminded they are not to sit while clocked in. No one knew it was me because we were always short staffed and I usually loaded the go-backs truck myself. The next night, the manager came in and exploded at the disrespect and yada yada yada. He ordered a new chair, but it didn't arrive for a couple days and no new chairs came to replace the others, just his, so I shipped it back again. This time they caught me the next day, but his chair was already gone. I was fired and they were threatening me with petty theft and whatnot, but since I had just shipped the chairs to the warehouse, they didn't really have a leg to stand on. One of my friends said that the chairs were all returned a couple nights later and everything went back to normal. Oh, a man. Now that I write this out, there wasn't a happy ending.